This is how AI will change music production for good. While everyone is going crazy about ChatGPT, for good reason, the system is really awesome. Write a Drake verse. I'll copy this verse. Put it in an Uber doc. Stick to my guns and say no to the beans. I don't like them in my chili. It's just how it's gonna be. This video is not gonna be one of them. Because let's face it, yes, it's gonna give you some great inspiration for some lyrics or for some chords. But we also have Rhyme Zone and we can also just Google for some chord inspiration in our genre. But I want to talk about something completely different today. Of course, I'm over exaggerating. I do believe Chat GPT and GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, which is only about to come out, out are revolutionary, but I'm going to talk about something else right now. While the writing process of writing a song is maybe going to get changed by ChatGPT, music production and recording has not been affected yet. OpenAI, the makers of GPT-3 and DAL-E2 also have some projects that are connected to music. They are already very incredible. One is called Jukebox AI, which has been around for some time, and the other is Musenet. And Jukebox essentially works by listening to a bunch of music from one artist and trying to create something that kind of sounds like it. Obviously, that is a very difficult task. The first time that I heard it, it blew me away, and honestly, it kind of still does. The laws of gravity I'm a mess in my facts and my life It's a kind of like a ghost guy There's no sudden fish I'm burning through the sky Sometimes, of course, that stuff sounds pretty cursed. But this... It's Christmas time and you know what that means you can hear what artist is supposed to sound like. It does sound like Frank Sinatra. It's mind blowing. So it essentially learns how a specific artist sounds like, what frequencies are common, what is the timbre of their voice, the timbre of the instruments. Sometimes it can exhibit something like consistent, but it still is not yet really able to produce music. Speaking about OpenAI's MuseNet, you can basically input MIDI data and it will help you finish the song, even with some various instruments can generate up to four minute musical compositions with 10 different instruments. So let's try it. We're gonna select now the style of the Beatles and use the start of Beethoven's Für Elise. We can select all the different instruments we want to have. And now let's see. That didn't work. Maybe you have to use Google Chrome or something. It doesn't work on Safari for me, but I've seen it work for other people and it's pretty cool. Technology like this can also be super useful. And there's also another tool which can do something similar, like compose some orchestral music for you, which is also super advanced. But still, that's not the point that I'm trying to make in this video. Now, how, in my opinion, will AI change music production and music composition most substantially? Currently, it can maybe write lyrics, but then imagine how Dal E used to look like two or three years ago and how it looks now. We never had anything like stable diffusion five years ago, and now we are able to synthesize insanely high quality images. The improvements are truly insane, and I'm pretty certain that I'm gonna use it for my future releases as album art in some way. So now imagine that you want to have a guitar that is strummed in a certain way, with certain sonic quality. Maybe it's a special guitar with some certain wood, recorded with some really awesome microphone in a brilliant sounding studio, maybe with a very particular amplifier, or mixed already in a particular way that you like. Maybe you can record your guitar outside on a windy day and then transform it using AI, making it sound like it was recorded in a million dollar studio. And now imagine, instead of going to Splice to search for a specific loop that might or might not fit to you, you just type into the AI and ask for a loop that is personalized to your song and sounds exactly how you want it. And maybe it's also adaptable depending on if you like certain qualities or not. Imagine maybe the AI is also able. You're recording a guitar with your phone or maybe with a really bad microphone or in a room that doesn't sound good. It can listen to what you're playing, not just the notes or maybe even the strumming, the rhythm, but maybe it can listen to the intricacies of your playing style and just generate a high quality audio for you. And I believe that with voice, we are kind of already getting close to that. That's the second big thing that I see for music happening in the near future. And I believe that AI is gonna be a big game changer once there is a generative AI that can do that for you. Obviously, we are still, I mean, maybe we are still some time away from that. Jukebox AI has kind of been around for some time now. It's not completely impossible that we're gonna see a breakthrough in the creation of music, like with DAL-E or GBT3, within the next five, maybe 10 years. And the second use case that I see is voice cloning or synthesis. This isn't even my voice. I use Descript to clone it. This is my real voice. 
Actually, just kidding. This is another software that I used. And for this one, you only had to record 25 sentences. And it creates this text-to-speech thing for you, which actually is pretty insane how well it works already. And if you don't want to clone your voice, but you still want to record it yourself, even if you don't have a great microphone, you can use Adobe's AI tool that will help you make any recording of your voice, like any talking that you did. No matter the quality, even if it was recorded on your phone, if you were in a really noisy environment. And I think this example demonstrates that really well. There's a lot of echo in this room, fan running in the background, and the audio is being recorded into an old broken phone. How do you fix all of this without installing any software, without learning anything, without having to download anything? This new AI tool by Adobe can already do what I hope will happen for instruments as well in the future. So even if you don't have a great sounding room or you're working remotely, you can already kind of make your own voice over on the train, in the airport, and it kind of sounds pretty, pretty nice already. But how essentially does Adobe do that? I suspect that it uses something very similar to Isotope RX10 in a sense that it's synthesizing frequencies that are getting lost or that are just not there. And what does that mean exactly? Essentially through machine learning, the AI learned how voices usually sound and what frequencies are to be expected based on the raw material that you gave it. At least that's as far as I understand. Yeah. If I'm wrong, please correct me in the comments. It kind of does that and predicts what frequencies should be there and also kind of removes noise because it figured out what frequencies shouldn't be there in a high quality studio recording. Listen to the initial state. Spot a Spanish revival and house. And then I switch over to it's the. It's got high ceilings and exposed beams. We're super excited to add some personal touches. This is already released and it actually works really, really well. And I'm showing you these examples to tell you that we're already at a point where we can clone our speaking voice relatively comfortable. I mean, the first example I did, I had to record like 30 minutes of audio. And for the other one, 25 sentences. And that's really not a lot. So without the need of a great mic, or without the need to talk at all after the initial training process. I'm able to record usable audio on the go anywhere I am, and which is super good for my workflow of making videos. So Jukebox AI is already kind of able to recreate the general sound of a band and also the timbre of the voice of the singer to a certain extent. Now imagine you can clone your voice, but not only your speaking voice, but instead your singing voice. Or in fact, for that matter, it doesn't even have to be your own voice. I mean, who doesn't want to duet with maybe Drake, or honestly, wouldn't you like to revive Freddie Mercury? I'm editing this right now and I'm just thinking there will be so many unreleased songs that labels suddenly find from artists that are already dead for some time that are going to be released in the future. Yang? Another really crazy thing is like all those TikTok voice filters already can do amazing feats of technology. You can use a sample of your own voice and essentially out comes voice of Joe Biden, who is the current president of the United States. And a lot of these are already able to change their pitch depending on how you spoke. So imagine that I'm going to sing something and out comes the voice of Freddie Mercury. You can turn voice synthesis into singing voice synthesis. Or maybe it can be used that I'm going to sing something, but I know that I can't reach a certain note and I'm going to just create a synthesized version of my voice that can sing that high. And I'm going to use only these specific parts of the artificial performance to enhance my own performance. Okay, here in UberDuck, you can already create voice doubles by certain artists. They don't have Freddie Mercury here, but they have Brian May. <laughs> I think it broke UberDuck. Alton John. One band. Goodbye. Yeah, right, okay. Maybe it doesn't work well for me right now, but you see the technology is going that way already. Let's try another one. This one has Freddie Mercury. Let's see how his speaking voice sounds like. What are we doing in this sound What is with these weird artifacts at the end? And what I suspect is that this software has a couple of samples from these artists, and then it creates some images and their own version of it but maybe the amount of samples that it had wasn't great. This did not work out well. Let's try him singing. One by one in the <laughs> you see, this technology is still kind of far away from that. But what you have to realize is that OpenAI, although it has released a lot of software now to the public, we don't know how powerful GPT 3.5 or GPT 4 are already and which features they're not releasing to the public yet because they would be too groundbreaking. I believe we only get kind of the light version. As long as we have enough high quality sound samples, we might be able to create a voice double that can sing essentially anything. 
and we'll be able to make it sound in the way that we want it to sound. And of course, there are already brilliant word builds from East-West Hollywood choirs and backup singers. They're really usable. But after all, what they are, as far as I understand it, they recorded different vowels, and then you can kind of like piece those words together, which is still really awesome, but it's not voice synthesis. Like DAL-E or Stable Diffusion synthesize images from noise or from nothing. And I believe that in the next couple of years, we're going to see complete synthesis like we see in the DALI 2 approach. When it comes to video, this is already being worked on by uh, Google has a service called Google Imagen, and there might be others as well. Definitely they're not yet as far as image synthesis. Obviously, moving images, videos is much more complicated than just creating one still image. With one still image, you still have to be able to make a coherent shape. What I still see on DALI 2 is maybe you have more than five fingers or sometimes you have some weird artifacts. With video, one frame has to be consistent to what happened in the previous frame and that kind of has to match together to make sense as a useful video. The same goes with music or with audio files. It's necessary that the audio file has to have a certain level of coherence, otherwise it will sound choppy and unnatural. By the speed that we are progressing currently with these types of technologies, this is where I see music production going and where I see AI having the most value to producers. One of the coolest AI video editing tools is Runway ML, which is really cool. You can do a lot for free as well. And one of the features that they're sort of working on right now is text to video editing. I think we are so used to our programs that we kind of forget that they are just ways to communicate with the system to express our own desires. And while I spend a lot of time learning logic and understanding what all the different parameters on the plugins are doing, just telling the software what I want to achieve, the specific sound that I want, would be way more intuitive and would make audio production software and any software for that matter more accessible. So on Runway, we can already see this kind of happening. And now imagine pairing this with a brain-computer interface, so you don't even have to say it out loud or type it anymore. Maybe I'm getting a few years ahead of myself, but this might be the future that we are heading towards. I think one of the biggest things that all these AI tools will be able to help us with, it finally enables us as a species to communicate with the machines that we created in a way that is natural to us rather than us having to learn how machines want to be talked to. So if in the future, artificial intelligence can help us express us in a way that comes natural to us. I think then it's going to be one of the most useful technologies, which it probably already is. These are just some use cases that I can imagine and that I hope are going to become reality very soon. But judging by the state of technology right now, like with technology like Jukebox AI that could already, I think back in 2019, achieve some great feats. And with the voice cloning software that we are seeing a huge rise of recently. Don't get me started on those MIDI AIs. They are also really awesome, but I think creating MIDI notes, which is kind of like computer data, bits and pieces, is probably a little easier than creating coherent sound waves that sound like a specific instrument. So what are your thoughts? What is AI gonna do to the music production industry? I'm really looking forward to the future, but I'm also scared. But while I believe that other jobs are very highly at risk, I think music producers still have I'd give us like five to 10 years at least until this technology is at the same level as image generation software. Do you think that AI will completely eliminate the need for human musicians? Or do you think there will always be something human that technology just can't reproduce? So if you do enjoy this kind of content and other music related content, stick around here because I'm just getting started on this second channel because I'm gonna create more of that, not only around AI, but also just general music tutorials. So thank you for watching until here. If you watched until here, comment the spirit of AI with a robot emoji. Thank you and goodbye.